What if I told you that the solar eclipse isn't all that mysterious? What if I told you it was merely a trick of the light? That one could take a pen and paper and create their own solar eclipse in mere seconds? Well, that's not very fun, is it? I mean, the solar eclipse has the power to send the day into total darkness. It can chill the earth in mere minutes. Honestly, solar eclipses are just plain cool and beautiful to look at. So mysterious and captivating are solar eclipses that humans have pondered their significance for thousands of years. The oldest recorded solar eclipse is thought to have been etched into clay tablets by ancient Syrians in 1300 BC. Some legends go as far back as 4,000 years ago, chronicling irate emperors beheading their astronomers for not predicting the date of an eclipse. Others still allude to ancient solar eclipses as omens, harbingers, and acts of godly retribution. And today, conspiracies on TikTok and other social media believe the solar eclipse to be the end of the world. Revelations, technological wonders, and human catastrophes separate hundreds of generations of humans, and yet, the mystery of the eclipse event has remained ever so mesmerizing. So, my goal today is to be a big nerd about something really cool and explain it until it's mundane and lifeless. The solar eclipse, this giant spooky event of near total darkness in the middle of the day, can be broken up into these lines and circles. Now, let's back up to the diagram without the lines and shadows. Here's the sun, the moon, and the earth, as if the universe were flat. Note the distances and sizes are not to scale, but I think that will help to drive home the point that the eclipse comes down to geometry. The sun will send light forward towards the moon and the earth like so. Note that these light arrows are different lengths. These here stop at the moon, these stop at the earth, and these arrows continue towards infinity. Now, the sun's light is emitted in all directions as waves slash particles. So with that fact in mind, here's a more accurate representation of sunlight in our diagram. Lastly, we're missing the representation of the moon and earth blocking portions of the sun's light rays. And voila, we have our sunlight, moon, and earth model. If we remove the moon and look at the interaction between the sun and the earth, we see what's happening with light and how it gives rise to night and day on our planet. If you're on this half of the Earth, it's day. If you're on this half, it's night. We can see the same splitting of the Earth on Google Earth. And here's the representation on a flat two-dimensional map of the entire Earth's surface. Notice half of the map is illuminated and half isn't. Note that the Sun is still illuminating the Earth at all times but because of the geometry of rays and the interaction with the big blue sphere we call Earth, we end up with a region without light rays, and we call that night. This is true of all spheres, and near spheres when illuminated by a single light source. Only half of the sphere is illuminated at any moment, and everything behind the sphere is left in darkness. Here, the same interaction occurs between the moon and the sun. So, Anything standing in this region behind the moon will experience a localized darkness. Now I'm sure you can see where this is going. What happens if we add, say, a planet behind the moon here with, I don't know, continents and water and humans? A portion of the Earth in daytime, which should be illuminated according to our diagram, is now dark. This localized darkness resulting from the temporary blocking of light rays is what we call an eclipse. Also, fun fact, Earth casts its own shadow here, so technically, other planets in the solar system have their Earthful eclipse, where part of the surface of other planets sit in this dark region behind the Earth. The word eclipse comes from the Greek term that literally meant missing from its usual place. Usually, the Earth is illuminated during the day, but during an eclipse, the usual light is missing from its usual place. Here, we have words like forsake, abandonment. 
The fact that the word for eclipse is related to all these emotionally charged words related to leaving is quite revealing. Our usual cycle of roughly half day and half night, something so fundamental to being a living organism on Earth, is disrupted during an eclipse. And according to our language, the temporary departure of the sun is seen as a breach of trust. In short, the word for eclipse is the word for betrayal. The sun has forsaken us, and we are abandoned, forlorn. Despite being an event well understood by philosophers and mathematicians for thousands of years as the interaction between light and celestial bodies, the eclipse is, by definition, alien and unnatural to us. The day is the day, precisely because it is illuminated. Day starts at sunrise and ends at sunset. But during an eclipse, the sun, at its summit, far from rising and setting, and at the height of our day, height of its warmth and life and glory, has vanished. It is no surprise then that the solar eclipse has been so significant and captivating for humans for millennia. Well, that's the end of the video. If you liked today's content, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. And most importantly, drink plenty of water and be well. Until next time.